lot of different ways for a long time, and in fact, a lot of ways before it was even recorded that we don't have access to, to hear. But um, I think what I've done is maybe is maybe take some of the techniques that people were using on guitar or violin or different instruments and brought them to the banjo. Um, even in terms of just scales and you know regular musical patterns. When I came into banjo, banjo was mostly position oriented. People would be playing open, second position. And uh, there were people doing little licks in position. Uh, and, and, but almost always out of the positions. What I started doing was uh, connecting all of them. Uh, playing like a musical instrument of this time. So, which isn't to say other banjo players weren't doing that before, but it might take a little, little more studied approach to it. Like if you were a saxophone player, you would learn your scales. But if you were a banjo player, you wouldn't. So, uh, in a lot of cases, people weren't even playing certain techniques that I had to develop to, in order to play them. That seemed like totally obvious at this point because, you know, they're very natural to do. They're done on every other instrument, but a lot of people, nobody was really doing them on the banjo. The odd thing about the banjo to me is that the, the, the what you consider the lowest string, and where the lowest string of the guitar would be, is the highest string on the banjo. So you're going up, you start at the fourth string. On the top is the highest one, but it's right next to the lowest one. So it, it really doesn't make a lot of sense, but it, it's really cool. The fifth string is a really uh, great character. Because when you're when you're playing, if if you didn't have it, um, bring in the fifth, and so as your thumb, which is your strongest finger, is playing that fifth string, it gives it a very propulsive quality. There's a lot of syncopation that comes out with it. There's certain areas that yield a certain sound on the banjo, a dissonance or an open string that works well in an odd key. the combinations of the open and closed strings because the banjo is tuned so close you can get some great dissonances and great sounds sometimes I'll get inspired to write a song from those I might just be screwing around find an interesting position We've got a, a pickup system that uh, Richard Battaglia, who works with me, um, helped devise. There's a pickup inside and a microphone outside. And because so much of the sound of the banjo is acoustic, there's a richness and a depth to it, um, it's very hard to get it with just a pickup. But, but by putting the microphone on here, too, we run them out of stereo cable, and uh, you know I can move around. I'm not stuck by a microphone, but I still have the sound. If you learn the stuff too quickly and you try to rush through it, your playing will sound uh, sloppy for your whole life. And I think it's very important to slow down. There's no hurry getting there. It's just that the hurry, the, the, the thing is getting it right. So if you take things slow, use a metronome or a drum machine or whatever it is, um, your building blocks will be so good, your timing will be so good, people will want to play with you. And learn stuff that you like because that's how you develop your style, not just by learning what other people tell you to learn. Well, you got to learn Earl Scruggs, you got to learn Tony Trishka, or, or even me at this point. I think it's more important that people find stuff that they really enjoy, that they think it reaches them somehow. Practice that because the more of that stuff that they have, the more they're going to sound like themselves. Mm -hmm.